Milk bottle skulls are easy to make. And while there are many tutorials on how to make milk jug skulls out there, this is my take on the process. Firstly, I'm in Australia, so we don't get our milk in the really big, squarish plastic bottles that are used in the USA and elsewhere. These skulls are made from the three litre bottles that we use in our house. The one item that you will need to get first is a resin skull that can take the heat from a heat gun. They're pretty easily bought on the internet, which is where I got mine. This skull needs to be mounted firmly so that you can mould the skulls you're about to make around it. I firstly did this by gluing a dowel into the bottom of the skull. It worked okay for most of it, but it wasn't really stable enough. So later down the track, I used two screws and a small block of wood. This gave me a much firmer mount and also allowed me to use the jawbone in place so I could make the full skull with the jaw included. Next I made a template to cut around the bottle. This is not necessary but it helps if you're going to make lots of skulls. I found it easier and quicker to cut the shape with a sharp knife than with scissors but either gets the job done. The next things you need are a bucket of cold water and a sponge nearby because you'll be using the sponge a lot. You'll also need a thick leather glove to protect your left hand from the heat, and you'll need a heat gun. Make sure that the blank you have cut sits below the level of the top teeth, and you can start to heat the plastic. You'll see that it turns clear once it heats up. This means it's ready to be moulded. Using the wet sponge, I start by pressing in the hollows for the eyes and nose, then work my way around the lower jaw and under the cheekbones. If the plastic gets too soft, it's easy to tear a hole in it, especially in the eye sockets, as you can see here. The skulls work pretty well, even if there are holes here, so it doesn't really matter that much. I found if you try not to heat the plastic too hot and work very slowly, you can avoid making holes here most times. Then I work my way around the skull, doing the forehead and the back of the eye sockets continuing around the skull until it's complete. These bottles appear to have a seam in the middle of the forehead at the top, which opened up a split quite often. I found later on that you can patch this with an offcut, and we'll see this later. Once the jug has cooled in a few minutes, you can pull it off and it's ready for painting. At this stage, I wanted to see if I could make a complete skull. So I used the bottom of this bottle to mould around the top and the back of the skull. I had to cut it up the back in order to get it off, and then figure out a way of sticking the two bits together. Gorilla glue seemed like it might work, so I used that. It's a tricky thing to clamp this join, so I had to be patient and let the join at the top dry before adding more glue to the sides, which were easier to clamp. Making the jaw was almost harder than making the top part. Firstly, I moulded it from the bottom, or from below. Then when that had cooled, I turned it over to do the top. At this point, I realised that I'd missed part of the teeth, so I tried my first patch in order to fix it. I cut a small patch and slipped it between the plastic and the mould. This worked remarkably well. Then lots of trimming excess plastic and a bit more moulding and I had a jaw that worked reasonably okay.
Again I used Gorilla Glue to keep the jaw in place. Now that I had discovered how easy it was to patch the skulls, I got more ambitious and extended a couple of the skulls I'd already made. Then it was time for painting. I found I got a better effect if I painted the insides of the skulls with a cream coloured spray paint and then spray the lower part of the skulls on the outside with black, making sure to get right into the eye and nose sockets. Once this was dry, I hand painted a coat of white over the black. I left the nose and eye sockets black. On some skulls, I detailed the teeth but found this wasn't always necessary, as dry brushing was often sufficient. I experimented with a couple of different colours on the inside, but eventually settled on the cream as the best option. I made these skulls to decorate my pirate themed bar and also to dress up my clock tower for our pirate themed easter egg hunt. All in all, it was a fun project with a very satisfying result.